Look, Micro Four Thirds cameras are not everyone's cup of tea, and actually, they're probably the most divisive system going. But there's no denying that they bring a unique range of features and benefits to photographers and videographers. The great news is, is that there's lots of great options out there. But in 2025, which Micro Four Thirds camera should you buy? Welcome to Adventures in Aperture. So, while there are plenty of MFT cameras on the market, this video is going to focus on the four cameras I've used the most. That's the OM5, OM1 and its Mark II version, the Panasonic G9 and of course, the new OM3. Let's start with the OM5. This is the smallest and lightest camera in this roundup, although it offers the same 20 megapixel resolution as the OM1 and OM3, albeit without the same stacked sensor design. The OM5 is a paradox. Launched after the OM1, it somehow weirdly has the older Olympus menu interface instead of the newer menu design from the OM1 and OM3. It's also the only camera in this roundup that doesn't have a USB-C connection, instead relying on a micro USB option instead. The camera is weather sealed, but this doesn't feel at the same standard as that robust OM1 camera. With a 5-axis IBIS system and a max burst rate of 30 frames per second, it offers a single SD card and both the high resolution and built-in live ND features, but it doesn't have the more advanced computational features found on the OM1 Mark II and the OM3. But who is the OM5 really for? Well, I think this camera is a great all-rounder, especially for those who value lightweight dimensions over more premium features. After all, this camera tips the scales at just 414 grams. Great for taking out for the day, the small size and excellent grip of the OM5 makes for a hugely pleasing user experience. With 121 AF points, focus is not as great as in the more premium OM cameras and there's no subject detection technology either, but it can film up to 4K and also offers an external microphone port. So let's move on to the OM1 and the OM1 Mark II. I own the Mark I, but I've also used the Mark II a lot of times, and the only major difference between the two is the price, with the Mark I obviously being more affordable, and that the newer version offers rubberized dials that are easier to use in cold weather conditions. Um, and of course, it also offers that live graduated ND filter feature. Built around a 20 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor, the cameras are really well built, featuring an IP53 rating, so you know they're going to be alright in harsh conditions, they're freeze proof, dust proof, moisture proof, everything. Weighing 599 grams, this is a heavier camera, but it is the flagship model and boasts additional features such as that weather sealing that I've already mentioned, along with a dual SD card slots, so users can make an instant backup of their images, or they can set one card to record stills while the other records video. Now, the OM1 is also the OM system camera to buy if you shoot both stills and video, as this model can shoot 4K at 60p and offers a number of log profiles too. The speed of the camera is amazing, offering up to 120 frames per second with single mode focus, or 50 frames per second with continuous focus. That's lightning quick. The burst mode is blackout free, which will help you focus on your subject. And talking of focus, there are 1,053 EF points and that subject detection technology, which really comes into its own when photographing subjects like birds. The Mark II has a larger buffer than the Mark I, so that could be a factor in your buying decision. And the other slight difference is that the 5-axis IBIS system offers slightly more compensation with the Mark II. Now, this is a camera for those that like to go out in bad weather, shooting landscapes and wildlife. Now, let's finish up the OM system cameras with the newest model, the OM3. And if you want to see more of what this camera can do, you can watch my full review video on this channel. This is easily the best looking Micro Four Thirds camera on the market and will appeal to street and travel photographers thanks to its retro chic design. That said, along with being an excellent option for street photographers, the OM3 is a decent all-rounder, offering the same computational features found on the OM1 Mark II, including that cool live grad ND filter. There are areas where this camera can't quite match the flagship OM1, namely the lower resolution EVF and the presence of only one SD card instead of two. But I'd argue it has most of the best bits of the OM1 cameras, including that subject detection technology. 
While I prefer the OM1 for video work, the OM3 does make a good case for this area too, with 4K 60p, a dedicated switch for slow and quick video, and it's the first OM system camera to offer OM cinema modes, which help footage look cool without the need for colour grading back at the computer. This is primarily a camera for those who want to get creative, and to help them is a dedicated front dial so you can switch between in-camera creative modes quickly to shoot in mono or with the many, many art filter options available on the OM3. Now, while the camera looks beautiful, the build won't be for everybody as the front plate doesn't make for the best grip. However, third-party manufacturers are already onto this and grips are now popping up on the internet. And then there's the Panasonic G92. This is the Micro Four Thirds camera I'd recommend if you shoot just as much video as you do stills. The first Lumix camera to offer face detect autofocus, this camera is great at locking onto subjects quickly and accurately and offers the highest resolution of all the cameras in this video at 25 megapixels. That's higher than some full frame cameras. There's subject detection options and the G92 is a fast camera offering up to 60 frames per second with continuous focus or 75 frames per second with single focus. So not quite as fast as the OM1 Mark II but fast all the same. There are plenty of in-camera effects to use such as the Leica monochrome option that gives a lovely high contrast mono look to the frame and the 5 axis IBIS system offers up to 8 stops of compensation. The weather sealed build of the G92 is impressive and offers two SD card slots, but content can also be recorded directly to an SSD drive, expanding storage options and quickening up a workflow, which is important to working professionals. The build of the G92 is somewhat bulkier and this is the heaviest camera in the roundup at 658 grams. However, this is by far the best option for videographers, with the G92 offering 5.7K and the ability to shoot 4K at 120p so that you can record slow motion footage in ultra high resolution. This is an absolute deal breaker for me and was one of the biggest reasons for me to buy this camera in the first place. The log profiles offered by this Panasonic are brilliant, allowing for a high degree of editing in post-production, and there are so many frame rates and video mode options on this camera that it's often picked in favour over Panasonic's dedicated MFT video option, the GH7. Now look, all these cameras are brilliant in their own way, and each has its pros and cons, and they are different enough for you to find the right camera for your own photography. Again, this is just my opinion, but I love the OM5 for days out in the city. I love the OM1 for wildlife photography, and my G92 is absolutely amazing for video and stills work. The OM3 is on loan to me at the moment, and as I said in my OM3 review video, it's a great camera that's perfect for getting creative with. And the best thing about Micro Four Thirds is that you can own different cameras from both brands and use the same lenses on all of the bodies. But what do you think about these cameras? Which one would you have or spend your own money on? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. I try to reply to every comment and thanks again for watching. See you next time.